My assignment today is uh, just to give you an overview that will serve as an introduction for today's discussion in so far as developments and um, uh, trends in the solar industry in this part of the globe. So, um, just uh, to give you an outline of how I'm going to tackle this uh, session, um, I'll just give a very short description of what uh, we do, Solar Alliance, and then um, just run you through the different um, uh, insulation uh, in, in the region, and then how those different countries are harnessing the solar resources, what are the policy drivers and challenges in harnessing those resources, and then I'd like to focus on the case studies in the Philippines and what lies ahead <clears throat> as we move towards deploying solar both in the region and in the Philippines. So let me start by introducing what the Philippine Solar Power Alliance is about. We are a very young organization. We were organized about three years ago. And as uh, was uh, in the introduction, we are composed of panel manufacturers. Um, Hanwha Solar is one of uh, our members. Sun Power, of course, which is based in the Philippines, is also our member. And developers um, to who have who are taking advantage of the filling tariff program, system installers who are um, essentially focusing on rooftop installations, and also off-grid uh, providers. Uh, our role is to uh, really dialogue with uh, with government and help them shape the policies that will promote solar energy in the Philippines. And <clears throat> we provide. Uh, training, we organize exhibits such as this one and technical exchanges with different uh, PV associations globally. Um, so just uh, an overview of uh, what insulation we have in the region. I think this map is familiar to most of you. And as you can see, um, uh, Thailand occupies a very uh, big part of this, of this map the Philippines as well. We are all in that part of the equator that enjoys a lot of sun, and therefore it begs the question of why not solar? So there is really every reason for renewable energy developers to come to this part of the world and harness that resource that is available in ASEAN. So just some information that was uh, uh, provided um, I have uh, basically captured uh, three jurisdictions, three, con three countries, and very specific location. In the Philippines, this is the actual uh, data. Uh, this is the only megawatt installation in the Philippines right now, and you can see more or less the installation that has been recorded in this area, in Thailand also, and in Malaysia. So in all of those, locations, it is evident that there is a lot of potential in terms of electricity that can be harnessed per kilowatt, uh, per square meters in this specific states and countries. In terms of how the policies are formulated in Malaysia, in Thailand, and the Philippines, uh, in Malaysia, as you very well know, the fit-in tariff was passed in 2009, and they have also organized a government authority that directly manages and handles the implementation of the feed-in tariff that is uh, proposed by different power producers. That was uh, enacted, the feed-in tariff uh, rule was passed in 2009 and SEDA was created in 2010. In Thailand, the other program was introduced in 2011. In the Philippines, the renewable energy law was signed in 2008. The implementation rules was issued in 2010. And uh, similar to Malaysia, the National Renewable Energy Board was created in 2010. So in all these three countries in the ASEAN, realizing the potential of solar, in these countries, the policy regime has started three years ago. And as we will see later, the, implement, the status of the implementation in these countries are moving forward um, in accordance with the planned uh, installation. 
So what are the different reasons of the countries that have introduced these policies in their own countries? A major uh, concern for Malaysia is the reduction of their subsidies. In uh, the, We all know that they are an oil producer and they're able to gain a lot of export earnings from the sale of uh, their oil resource. And one of the driving force uh, in introducing the feed-in tariff is the reduction of the subsidies in Malaysia. Um, the policy was also uh, crafted in such a way as to attract companies to manufacture solar panels and cells in Malaysia to create jobs and drive the manufacturing sector in Malaysia. Um, this is also one of the reasons why the feed-in tariff program and the renewable energy program in Malaysia was passed by parliament. Of course, a common reason is the climate change mitigation objective of Malaysia. In Thailand, it's really a diversification of their source of energy. Thailand is not a producer of gas, it's not a producer of oil, it doesn't have coal. So really the energy independence agenda is the basis for developing and introducing the feed-in tariff or the other program in Malaysia. In the Philippines, it's also energy independence that has driven the policies of solar. Although we are a producer of coal, it's a very minimal uh, uh, amount. Although we're a producer of oil and gas, it's also an insignificant amount. So really, our imports are large in so far as fossil fuels are concerned. So this uh, dependence on imported fuel is driving the prices of electricity. Um, the other is the rural electrification program. A lot of the subsidies are into rural electrification. So this is also one of the drivers that is pushing the program forward. So what's going on? Um, this, the data uh, that uh, uh, Thailand and Malaysia and the Philippines have provided is essentially the installation target for the Philippines is about 50,000 kilowatt or 50 megawatt. In Thailand, it's two gigawatt. In Malaysia, it's 300 megawatt. And really the dates of those uh, installation target range from 2015 in the case of the Philippines, in 2020 in Malaysia, and in Thailand, it's in 2021. So as of April of, uh, as of, April of this year, there are about 550 megawatt of applications that have been approved in the Philippines and awaiting feed-in tariff or incentives from government. And I will talk about that a little bit later. In Thailand, there's about 890 approved applications, and in Malaysia, 166 megawatt that has been approved in installation for solar. Now, um, in so far as uh, the actual uh, installation, um, the uh, feed-in tariff program, although the rates have already been published, um, the uh, Permitting, the permitting challenges are delaying the implementation of the feed-in feed tariff. In Thailand, 6% um, of the two gigawatt, and that is a little bit, I, there's, we need to explain why that is so. Um, half of the two gigawatt uh, or one gigawatt has been allocated to solar thermal. And I think the policymakers are realizing that solar thermal is not exactly the most appropriate technology for this part of the world. So really, what has been installed and moving forward is the PV solar um, in, the, uh, in, in Thailand. And that has gained a lot of traction, and there are more installation in the PV solar. In Malaysia, about 55% has been um, deployed uh, or installed. So really from the Philippines, uh, from between Malay Malaysia and Thailand, the feed-in tariff program has driven the installation of solar in uh, both ground-mounted sector and in the rooftop sector. Question is, is this sustainable? Is um, the party uh, over for uh, in this part of the world in the same way that has happened in Germany, 
in Europe and in other parts of, of Europe. Um, as we all know, a lot of solar manufacturers are undergoing financial challenges. There has been a lot of industry consolidation uh, that has started in 2010. And, and as uh, Thomas has mentioned in his presentation, there has been a continuous drop in panel prices significantly. We are now about $1 per watt in so far as solar prices are concerned. We are seeing that and they continue to fall. So really, most of the policymakers are beginning to review their other program or their fit-in tariff program. There are better EPC prices that are out there in the market. We have benefited from the large installations in Europe as well as in some other parts of the world. So um, from a very high EPC price per watt, we're now seeing a $2 uh, per watt for installation of megawatt size project. And so more and more, there are pressures on policymakers to adjust their feed-in tariff. So the question is, is the party over? Is the feed-in tariff done? So let's just look as, as Thailand. Uh, in Thailand, uh, basically, they are reallocating the one gigawatt solar thermal. So they're in the process of converting the licenses that have been granted to ther solar thermal developers and shifting those licenses to BV Solar. So there is reason to believe that the program or the other program in Thailand will continue. Um, in so far as the PPA licenses for PV, there is now a stricter implementation and penalties are being contemplated to push developers to implement and connect or to build those uh, power plants that were given licenses. Also, new, no new applications are being provided in Thailand. So yes, the other program is continuing, but we are seeing a tighter and more refined policy um, regime in Thailand. In the Philippines, there is a reduction in installation target. Originally, the government has given 250. This was reduced to 50, and this is still currently being reviewed. In so far as the feed-in tariff, the um, other program has been adjusted. Originally, it was at 8 baht. Now it's at 6 baht. In Malaysia, there is a digression. I think this was just announced last month. There is going to be a cut in the Malaysian feed-in tariff to digress the uh, feed-in tariff. And in the Philippines, the new, the new secretary has just announced uh, that solar will only enjoy a feed-in tariff if it builds it first. So you enjoy the feed-in tariff if you're a merchant solar plant. A very innovative approach which a lot of developers are finding very difficult to comply with. So, um, the biggest in, uh, in Thailand, based on the adjustments in the policies and in their fitting tariff, will still be the ground-mounted um, solar installation. It will continue to grow, but in so far as the rooftop solar program is concerned, the Thai government is starting to develop a 10-year program that will give incentives to developers using the feed-in tariff as a mechanism to encourage buildings, residential, factories, and commercial establishment to shift to solar installation using an own-use approach. Also, they have introduced the one district, one megawatt program. This was started last year. I think the details of this program are going to be out by the middle of this year. So essentially, we're going to see a lot of rooftop installation in Thailand in the same way that we have witnessed the growth of the Thai ground-mounted installation utility scale last year. 
they are reviewing their permitting requirements. This is a table of all of the different permits that a developer in Thailand faces. And currently, these permits are being reviewed uh, to reduce all of these permits to reduce the turnaround time for solar installation in Thailand.